Back around 1996, 1997, Dan Electro returned back onto the musical scene after having been gone for decades and were mostly known at that time for their budget guitars that were used by Jamie Page in the 60s and 70s. And they returned in the 90s with a line of pedals, stop boxes that were oddly styled like a 50s Chevy Bel Air or something like that. They had an overdrive, they had a couple of other different pedals, but the fab tone is what got 16 and 17 year old me really excited. The fab tone had more distortion than you could shake a stick at. Even all the way down, I remember the amount of gain the fab tone had was absolutely insane. And everybody on all my friends instantly had them or at least it seemed like it. These were relatively inexpensive at the time. In 1997 money, these were about $70, which were you know, a solid $25 more affordable than the entry level boss pedal that didn't even have as much gain as the Fab Tone. So more often than not, this is what we would ask for for Christmas. However, even back then, the plastic input jacks always died and they always broke and the foot switch, the cheap, inexpensive foot switch rarely worked longer for than a couple of months. I myself, I think I had like three or four of these into a PV Rage 158 combo and it was just extraordinarily bad and I loved it. So we are going to plug in to this fab tone here today that I got a free verb for like 20 bucks and we're gonna see how it sounds. All right, so I have my 1990 Bernie Les Paul Custom with a Seymour Duncan JB in the bridge. I am plugged into the Dan Electro Fab Tone and I'm going into the clean channel of the Rev Generator 100. Now here is my clean tone. Needs more gain. Um, wow, this is, was, is exactly like I remember it. I'm gonna turn the gain all the way down. And we're gonna see how that sounds. There's just so much gain going on, even all the way down. So I'm gonna turn it back to noon. We're gonna mess with the EQ a little bit. Okay, so the thing is with the EQ, the low end goes from not doing much to doing way too much. This pedal was seemingly all about a lot, just 
whatever it is, just give it to me. And that was kind of appealing as a 17-year-old kid. Even though they are looked at as somewhat of a novelty now, the mid-90s Dan Electro pedals were actually a lot of bang for the buck. I remember the Overdrive specifically sounding really, really nice, and they had the Fish and Chips uh, pedal, they had an EQ, or I believe the Fish and Chips was an EQ, they had the tape delay pedal, which actually sounded really good, was in a lot of pro rigs at the time, so they actually had a lot of good sounding pedals, but the styling was kind of curious because this does not scream mega meltdown metal, but that's exactly what it sounded like. And it was just a, a pretty, pretty nice 90s oddity, if I may say so myself. All the Pigma links down below in the description. You have been wonderful, I've been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.